and we're going to be talking about The Last of Us, which is developed by Naughty Dog and published by Sony Computer Entertainment, originally released on the PlayStation 3 and remastered for the PlayStation 4, which is where I jumped in uh, on and got it on my PS4. Uh, so before we go any further, just to clarify that there will be spoilers for the first Last of Us game. Uh, obviously, since we uh, kind of uh, arrange this episode a lot is happening in the world of uh, the last of us part two but i just want to make clear that we're not going to be spoiling anything for last of us part two uh, our discussion is from a story's perspective is focused on the first game so if you haven't played the first game what are you doing uh, play that um, go play but, it now yeah, this like, podcast. Really, go play it <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, so if you have played uh, the first game, uh, that's what we're going to be getting into. But yeah, we're not going to be spoiling anything in uh, the second game. I haven't even seen any spoilers anyway. So uh, just a super quick summary uh, of the game. So this is a game where you control uh, Joel. Does he have a surname? Does anyone know? Um... I'm going to take that as a no. So. He doesn't. No, have. I don't think he does. Okay. All right. Well, Joel, that's good enough. Uh, so he's a smuggler who's been given the task of escorting a teenage girl, Ellie, who I assume also hasn't been given a surname. No, no, no. I mean, no. Sh- I'll have a look. Sh- yeah. All right. We'll, we'll fact check that. Ellie's understandable because she's like grown up in the yeah. post apocalypse world. So that's true. I'm but sure yeah. they don't bother. Joel should have like a <laughs> driver's license or something. Uh, anyway, we'll figure that out. Uh, so Ellie and Joel are on this journey across the post apocalyptic United States where an outbreak of a mutant fungus thingy is ravaging the country and turning people into zombie-like creatures known as the infected. And the game really centers around the relationship between Joel, you the player, and Ellie, uh, they're really the focus of this game. And I imagine that's a lot of what we're going to be discussing today. So where do people want to start? Because actually, let me just say, uh, so I played this game, I only just played this game at the start of this year, uh, after hearing sort of uh, how great it is and playing sort of bits of it with uh, on a friend's console and not quite getting sort of the full kind of impact of the game obviously if you're playing bits here and there so i just decided with the second game coming out uh, i'll get my own copy i'll play it from start to finish and i was just so impressed with this game uh so i'm gonna just throw something out there but i really did want to focus on the or at least start with the relationship between joel and ellie uh because for me just looking at i guess storytelling in games that was the one thing that impressed me just how their relationship uh, develops over the course of the game, but also impacts the gameplay as well. So not just the story. So what did you guys think about that relationship? Uh, all right, firstly, I'm going to just jump in and say um, on the fandom, it says Ellie Williams. Okay. It says it's non-canon. Oh, all right. So some, so, does that mean someone just suggested the name? So, uh, so it's got like, it's got all of the, Names for Ellie Williams, kiddo, what Joe calls her, baby girl. Yeah. What Joe calls her, new kid, what Riley calls her, wolf. Um, but yeah, so it says that it's non-canon. But yeah, I don't think she has a specific surname. Okay. Um, so I would say before you can even really jump into the relationship of Joe and Ellie, you got to kind of speak about Joe and Sarah. Mm. And yeah, obviously that's any, true. That's true. Anyone who... Anyone who's played this, huge spoiler, and it's only like... It's the first, like, yeah. yeah, ...to the game, but when you start off with The Last of Us, um, you start off playing as Sarah, who's Joel's daughter, and you're in the house and you're walking around, and it's, firstly, it's it's a real uh, masterpiece for Naughty Dog to show how impressive the graphics are of this game like you're walking around in this house and you're like oh my god this game is is gorgeous but they do something really smart and they make you play as sarah straight away so you almost start caring about a character without even realizing yeah, yeah. and you start you always grow, grow attached to the character you're playing so cause exactly. you think that's what your your journey is going to be about <laughs> exactly. So you start building a bond with Sarah, um, trying to look around the house, and 
happening, Joel bursting and bare madness is happening, and then he takes you in the car with you and his uncle, and then you just see the mayhem that is happening in yeah. the world. It's that whole um, the walking dead, like the world is ending, zombies are taking over the world, what the hell is doing? And they build you, they build up this this anxiousness really quickly, really, really quickly, and then within 10 minutes, they kill his daughter. It's a mm. major, major part of the story, and uh, I think the thing that I really liked about it is it has that, because you're the character in the game who doesn't know what's going on, and you, the player, doesn't know what's going on. So you're just in this, where am I? What is happening? Why is everyone panicking? Why is my dad panicking? I'm in this car. And like when you're in the car even, and you can look around and you just see all the chaos happening mm -hmm. around you. So for multiple reasons, that's such a good uh, sequence to really put you in the in the place of the story. And I think it's something they do really well throughout the whole of this game, um, is like really set the scene. Um, so if you played the game uh, and you pay attention, there's not actually that many points with zombies in it. Someone else highlighted this to me because uh, I was like, this game's so scary. And they're like, but zombies aren't even in it that much. Oh, they're not yeah. even zombies, but the infected aren't even in it that much. Uh, but because they create this constant atmosphere, they really set the scene and drive it in that you have to be alert. Uh, you never know when the infected are going to jump out of you or humans are going to jump out at you uh, and you are like the scenery and it's not all like dark and doom and gloom in this game there's a lot of bright scenes as well um, but you're always on the edge uh, and so like they're constantly like setting the scene um, and then yeah uh, the other thing I wanted to mention as well before going into Joel and Ellie's relationship is just like all of his relationships because uh, we meet his partner uh, as well uh, in the post-apocalypse, like in the once everything's gone down and yep. there is, you know, Tess. this military, yeah, Tess. Yeah. Uh, so we meet Tess and, and then his relationship with Tess is kind of highlighted as well. Um and then there's like this relationship with Ellie, but he's already been through so much. Uh, and then Ellie's kind of young, full of hope and has known nothing uh, but this world because um, she mm. was born in it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like everyone's just kind of like, this game is deep. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what makes me laugh because I actually spoke to Tazzy about um, The Last of Us and she was mo telling me how scared she was of it and how <laughs> I'm surprised you even like this game because you I think it's it. a horror and I'm like it's not even scary there's it nothing is. scary about this it's game. terrifying it's just so the story is just so well made and so gripping that like that I can power through the like this how scared I am <laughs> <laughs> And, and I've got Joel with me. It feels like I've got him there. So it's like, yeah, we're doing this together. I don't feel alone. I feel weaponized. And I feel like I feel like Naughty Dog done something with this game that most developers have never really been. Some not even been able to do, and some have always been scared to do is put story first. Yeah. Um, like every. All of us have spoken about it, and we're all talking about the narrative and the story of this game. Where we ain't even started talking about obviously mechanics and and how the game plays and um, the undertone messages under the game. But the but a game to be like the the thing that drives this game is narrative, and we're going to mm. show you within the first ten minutes. Because if you think it within the first um, the first. 10 to 15 minutes of the game you're literally just doing something like you might do in the walking dead you go yeah. and click on a tv you open a couple doors and you're in a car and you're looking out the window and you're talking like you're literally not really doing anything that's quote-unquote video gamey other than moving your your character around a room but no one would ever compare the last of us to um, a Telltale's Walking Dead or um, yeah. like a Life is Strange like there was clip based games because yeah. even it's completely though different. Yeah, even though in that short space you're hardly doing anything that's 
video game e you're so in driven into the narrative like it sucks you into the world in seconds yeah and then it it's amazing because it's like it throws everything at you at one minute and <laughs> it stops and it goes nope you gotta wait for our story now yeah yeah and it kind of um it do you know what it it tells a film-esque story better than films do <laughs> like this is a game like the if you were to sit down and watch it, watch someone else play it, you're not even going to notice they're playing. And you're going to be so drawn in to this, just the story of this game and the beautiful graphics as well. Like, even though I played it on PS3 and even on that, like, really epic. Um, and so in that first, like, you're not going to want to put this game down. If you if you want to put this game down in the first 10, ten minutes, like, you do, I don't know what's wrong with you. Like, because... <laughs> It's just not, it's so, oh, it's just, it's such a gorgeous game, just through so many aspects. So like that, that first, you know, sequence with Sarah, uh, it does a lot. So like Midas, you say it's not video gamey and I guess on the surface, it, it's not, you're not doing a lot that is sort of feels like you would in a typical video game, but what they're doing is finding like a, a unique way to get you to used to the mechanics of the game by moving around the house uh, and then moving outside of the house uh, with Sarah. Uh, but then they're also doing the, the story side of it of um, setting the scene. But then, and I'm going to talk about this like towards the end of the episode is uh, laying out like uh, the protagonist uh, ghost. So Joel's ghost, which is the, the death of his daughter uh, at the outbreak of, uh, of this of this madness. So it's doing a lot of things in such a good way that you kind of don't notice it almost. And that, that's why it's so good. You just, you just part of it, you're part of the experience, but then it, it's really impacting uh, the game from a mechanics perspective, but also from a story um, perspective. So after you see um, Sarah, uh, Joel's daughter die, we kind of flash forward to the present day in the game where everything is is just a mess and is you're fully in this like I guess it's like a dystopian sort of uh, infected uh, world where you've got these um, infected uh, wonder I was going to say like walking around or sort of stumbling around and then you've got like pockets of resistance and like I say you, you meet Joel uh, a bit more grey a bit more grizzled and Tess and they run across or they come across uh, Ellie who initially they don't understand her importance in this world but you know Joel's just tasked with delivering her from you know where she is to where she needs to get to and we kind of see how they respond to each other at first because obviously they don't there's nothing <laughs> there's nothing there relationship wise yeah. at first and, and I, um I, can I add one more thing before we go into Ellie? This is how much we love this game. Yeah. <laughs> first, first one other thing that I really want to add is I also feel like, I feel like Naughty Dog wanted to set a precedent of what this game is compared to what they've done in the past because Uncharted are incredible games and they've got great narratives, but they're very kind of Indiana Jones, boisterous, mm. like jokey, like, um, so people knew Naughty Dog could make incredible games. Like this yeah. is a, this isn't a new thing, but I think they wanted to set the tone really quickly. And I think they wanted to be, make people know no this isn't a nathan drake this isn't you're not going to be swinging around and and being like a yeah. superhero this is a story of pain yeah. and we're going to give you pain from the beginning and it's right it's, through it's, to the end <laughs> it's all about pain like um Tazzy, you were saying that you can't understand when people say that they don't like it like some people there's quite a few people i know who don't like this game because they feel like it feels sluggish and it feels um like i'd they, I think people expect it to feel like you're a superhero and you're not. You're a man who's going through pain and he's doing anything he can to survive and, and, and get through life. And I mm -hmm. think the game, the gameplay makes you even feel like that. But now we can get past the first 10 yeah. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So like what I was going to say is that, that as well, Joel's so, uh, closed. 
closed off and systematic and not quite selfish, but um, like even his relationship with Tess is kind of like because it seems like it's because it's convenient and not, you know, it's not it's not like a relationship built on uh, on anything well like not much more than availability and that this works uh it it is quite calculated like we go good together because of x y and z like i've i've done a tick box sheet here and yeah you fit the bill kind of thing rather than uh more of like a romantic connection uh it's kind of like yeah it works so uh well, I mean, it's, I it's kind of, crazy. Of, they're of the world, aren't they? So they're, yeah. it's just like survival is, is the number one priority. So that's where you get your relationships based off. Mm. I tell you what's crazy. I played the game twice. I completed the PlayStation 3 and the PlayStation 4 remaster. And I didn't even realise they were a couple until you said today. Wow. <laughs> I can maybe actually talk about it as well. Like, I'm, Obviously, I played it when it was first out on PS3 and then watched recap to, to refresh my memory. But I'm pretty sure they like say it <laughs> yeah because they, they weren't a, a current couple they were like it seemed like there was history basically or there were a couple with i think they were, were like that's a get that it's like a couple of convenience yeah. all together because you know i feel like at some point there might have been like passion there yeah. uh but then now it's just like we work together and you know there's not many trustworthy options out there yeah. <laughs> like you're in a world that you don't really want to make new friends and you don't really trust anyone and both of them have sort of been through a lot uh and and a and a older and like more like you know what like i just want to live <laughs> yeah i've done like the whole you know normal life kind of thing before this and it got taken away and now i just want to survive uh, and make the most of the survival. Yeah, and I think <laughs> because of like going back to that initial sequence, because of his loss, it, it's almost a you know I don't want to open myself up to that again to to feel that loss. I feel there's some of that in in Joel's character, um, which is like why when we we meet Ellie, then the the reaction from Joel especially because I I guess Ellie's a kid and and she's just you know who is this guy? I don't know him. Uh, automatically, I don't like him. Um, but for Joel, there's a bit more uh, to it than that. It's like yeah, I don't. She, I don't... He's, he's purposely stopping it. Yeah. He he's clearly someone that that used to be quite emotionally attached like caring uh, and quite a paternal instinct uh, and he, he i feel like he's self-aware of that and doesn't want to doesn't want to open up anything that could could open him to getting hurt again yeah. and he's like oh, i'm not even gonna i'm just gonna not he doesn't talk just about things yeah, he just blocks feelings he's like nope i'm not even gonna let it manifest um whereas ellie Ha, has made friends, has made connections, and she says it. Uh, there's one point, uh, sort of like, as it's as Joel sort of realizes that he she's grown on him, uh, which is like a bit further down. And um, after she runs away, when he's like, "I'm going to leave her here," uh, and she says, "Everyone I care about either dies or leaves me." something along those lines um and yeah so she is not trying to she's not actively trying to prevent connections in fact she's she's just being human and making the connections naturally as they as they come uh and she's not got this like closed off untrusting uh personality she's kind of open to the possibility Mm. of connection everywhere she goes um and yeah, they're like the very opposites. <laughs> yeah. Very opposites. She's she's lost, but she's like, I'm gonna keep trying. And he's like, Nope, I'm done. Uh and they both kind of learn from each other, I feel. Well, I almost I almost feel like that's a, a representation of, of real life though. Like when you're when you get to a certain age in life and you keep on going through things like as a as an adult a point in your life you're just like you know i can't I, I can't do this anymore like i'm done like and then but where you're younger you still have that that 
that childlike innocence of everything still available in life, yeah, like everything can still, yeah, yeah, every possibility still can be like. Like I can do anything I want where yeah. you get older and you're like, well, no, I don't have that much um, thing. So that, that as I'm saying, the, the, the narrative mm. of not only the the game, but the narrative of those characters yeah. was just so well thought about. Um, and like you were saying at the beginning, um, Nigel, the, the, that, that Ellie was just a package. Like she could have been fruit she yeah. could have been the delivery from tesco mm. fam and she he was told go and do this delivery and you're going to get paid and that was it i don't care about this person i'm yeah. just going to need to go and deliver this item i think i think you're not giving him, if, him enough credit because actually he's very shocked that it's a, a human young girl like he 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 argues against it it's actually tess that is in like no, we should do this. He's like, nope, I don't think we should do this. Uh, he kind of still has, and you can see it, there's certain things he do, does, like in the beginning of the game, where you can see the man that's underneath, this mm. like brick, like this this wall that he's put up. Uh, you can see what's underneath, um, and there is little points where he, it's, it's not a case of she's just a package. He he's self aware that he will have a connection. He is yes. very aware of that risk, uh, and he, the more they're put in the situations uh, before uh, Tess dies, that he wants to avoid it. He's yes, really he really doesn't want to take her through. He just he's like no, this is a girl. Like she should just stay here, and I should not have to put any risk. And like I just want, I don't want anything to do with human smuggling. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> he shows that it's not he, she's not just a package, uh, but she is at the same time. Like see, but by I, choice. So he, I interpret I interpret it as. He just don't want a responsibility for it. Not so much him, him like I might care for her because I don't feel like when, for my interpretation, I never felt like he was worried that he was going to start caring for someone. I just think he just doesn't want any responsibility for it. Like I'm not even going down that road. Mm. Mm. That, that's, that's how I interpret. That's how yeah, I, interpret. I kind of got the feeling that he just. Yeah, it's clear that like he didn't want to take any unnecessary risks in this world. And I feel like this represented an unnecessary risk uh, where there wasn't much reward. And you don't see that really. Even actually, even when they discover sort of the importance of Ellie uh, in that she has been bitten and hasn't turned for, I think, three weeks. And um, Tess is like, you know, she could be the, the cure. She could have the cure. Uh, so it's worth it. That was like the first point where there was a, a reward in mm. uh in in the job but he still didn't want to sort of but take he that would, risk if he if he didn't care he would have been like we're just, i'm just gonna leave her at, at, at no point does he even say like i don't think this is a good idea we should just leave her here True. uh it's we should take her back he's very specific like if you if you thought someone was not a someone and just a package you you'd be like, the road, like your, your, <laughs> your other option it wouldn't be like let's You'd think either like, if you wanted to wipe your hands of that responsibility, you'd just let go. Like you wouldn't, you wouldn't be so adamant for her to be in a spot of safety. Do you know what right. I mean? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can. I can um, get that. Which is why I'm like, no, he's he's aware of it, and at, and at every point, I feel, I don't know, I always got that sense that he he was very self aware of his risk of feelings. And he was purposely putting up a wall. Uh, and at every step of the way, he's constantly purposely putting up a wall. That's interesting. Okay, that's like a new yeah, new perspective on that uh, on that character. But like as you progress through the game, uh, and it for uh, you know uh, large parts, it's you and Ellie. What I was impressed with, and sort of even though I know it came out after I'd played uh, the latest God of War. 
uh, first before I played uh, Last of Us. And they have a similar mechanic where you're, you know, you play Kratos and you've got your uh, son. And a- again, very story driven game, but the, the son, the child helps uh, in terms of gameplay. And I like how they, they use that uh, as a way to build the relationship. So as uh, Joel and Ellie are progressing, like Ellie doesn't have any weaponry or doesn't have any firearms. And there's a point where she, she's like, she's asking for it, you know, cause of it, there weren't all these scenarios where, you know, there's all these infected and, uh, things like that. And then Joel gives her a weapon and that's kind of like a, it's necessity, but it's also, it shows like some trust and some growth in their relationship. And then beyond that, then Ellie becomes more of an asset, uh, to Joel, uh, and you, the player rather than just someone who's just on the side. So there's points mm-hmm. like later on in the game where like she's shooting people or she's like hitting people um, and actually is saving you in a sense, which I thought was yeah. really well executed. Yeah, definitely. Um, and they do, they slowly build your usefulness for Ellie as Joel's relationship grows for Ellie. Mm. Uh, and as his like wolves come down that yeah it's very clever yeah it's just really cleverly made and like to uh, Midas's point about so that that response of oh this doesn't feel like let's say Uncharted where you're you know you're mowing down like hundreds of uh of bad guys where here the the story lends itself to it and the mechanics as well so sort of, this is a, a slower pace game. This is a specific scenario of scarcity. Mm. So in this world, they don't have an abundance of, of weaponry and they play it really well in the game where you don't have much ammo, you don't have uh, many health packs and you really, you feel like you, when you spend something, like you feel it, like when I'm, when I'm shooting in this game, like I'm almost counting the shots. I'm like, you know, four, three, two, and I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> and really, you, you feel that. And I like how they've and kind you're, of matched the mechanics with the, the narrative as well. Yeah. And you're kind of trying to avoid to use, uh, avoiding using your guns. Like you're trying to find like bottles and things that can be crafted and, uh, like your, um, when you get the bow, mm. uh, it kind of like, yeah, I can use that instead because I can get the arrows back exactly, and stuff yeah, like that. Start, um, start being real frugal. <laughs> and you are, you're kind of like, uh, and for me, like, I don't, this game and slow don't go hand in hand, but that's because my heart is constantly racing at 100 <laughs> miles per hour. Like... <laughs> You start seeing like the the spores in the air, yeah. and <laughs> I'm like, no, oh, and the music changes, and then you go for a whole bit that there's not even like any combat. So I get why people would see it as slow, but for me, mm. I'm on my edge of the of my seat the whole time. <laughs> that I don't like it. It's never slow. Yeah, it's because I'm. Um, anticipating a clicker. You know what's coming, yeah. <laughs> like, how, did, th- how did that make you feel, Midas? I think I think um, the slowness as well, not even so much about just the pace of the game, I think it's the actual uh, mechanics. Like, when you're hitting someone, it's, like, really... Gl- gl- it's almost like... It really takes me back to those moments in The Walking Dead when like you can see someone just fighting for their life and they're just hitting someone to survive not um like we said like i'm a superhero and i can just shoot everyone Mm. um one thing i did really want to pick up on (laughs) yeah one thing i really wanted to pick up on what you're talking about nigel about the last of us i mean the um, god of war um i think the last of us is like one of the most uh, important games of this generation like there's so many games that change a generation of games like games like Fortnite like have changed a generation and I feel like the loss of us changed a generation because I think obviously it being a first party Sony game and Sony putting so much money behind it and it's selling so well made other um, companies be like raw we can actually 
have a, a game that's a one player game it's not yeah. about multiplayer yes. it's, and it's really story driven and this game like i i don't believe that god of war um the god of war remaster would be what it would be if the last of us didn't come out and even like just completing um the new final fantasy and like when you look at stuff in far cry like you see so many things that call back into this game and we we keep on talking about the narrative but one of the things that made this narrative so strong was those voice actors like mm. uh, naughty dog is is really really great at actually having their characters act out everything so yeah. they're doing the motion capping they're doing the voice acting like they're playing out a scene like it's a movie and you really feel it because Troy Baker I've loved Troy Baker in loads of games um but him as Joel like I felt it and Ashley um as Ellie like I felt those characters but even like the side characters like when you meet them two um the brothers yeah, the the black yeah, yeah. Um, Henry Henry oh and Sam and, and Sam yeah, yeah. Henry and Sam yeah and I cried like, so like, much like like those these these are characters that are not even so most people don't even remember them because they weren't in the game they're that in long. it for like a fraction in the middle they're important to like and they're at various so points so impactful so impactful and that 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 casting and and having that narrative built around a like characters like oh hey, naughty dog they're mad you know like they are so <laughs> sick they're so sick and this yeah. game like this game will always be one of my favorite like i love uncharted i think uncharted games are amazing because i think that like, they're the best games that like are action based yeah I put very this cinematic above, yeah but i put this above all of them because just the narrative just it just doesn't yeah. leave me like we're talking about this and I've played this game three... I've played it two times. I played it on the PS3 when it first came out. And I played the remaster on the PS4. Now, the PS4 came out in 2013. And I'm talking to you right now. I haven't watched... I haven't I haven't recapped the game. I haven't replayed the game. Like, I played this in 2013. And it still feels... I still feel this way about this game all of these mm. years later. The amount of games I've played on um, the PlayStation 4, like I'm a big um, PS guy, like Tazzy knows, and I'm <laughs> playing all of the first party games and I won't have the same passion that I think Spider-Man's one of the most fun games I've ever played, but it doesn't give me the same passion The Last of Us. Like, no. This game mm -hmm. blown me away. I mean, yeah, I think when I absolutely. finished the game and I got to the ending, and actually we're going to talk about that ending, um, I, I I had to message people, like, just to say, like, I think I think oh, was one of them. I, like, I messaged, I just, like, yeah. just finished this game. <laughs> and I just said, like, applause, because it's like, to have the the story and the ending that they did, it it just, it stays with you. And mm -hmm. that's the mark of a good story, where after you've you've done, it's not like, oh, okay, I experienced that, and I'm just going to put it aside and move to the next thing. <laughs> it's like, huh. I'm actually, yeah. I'm thinking about this. It's, like, it's, I'm, it's, I'm genuinely it's, thinking about it. Because um, I actually was uh, telling Midas before, uh, this game, I, like, so I'm scared of it. Just going to, I might have said it before, but just clarifying, I'm scared of it. Okay. The click is terrifying. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Um, so I started playing it on my own, uh, but then uh, a guy I was dating shortly after I started playing it, um, started playing it with me because I f found it really hard to play on my own because of how scared I was. Um, and then we broke up, but I still had loads of game to play. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I built up the courage to play it on my own. And um, I just had to like constantly text him. Uh, like we was on good terms. But it was like, okay, you never guess what happened. Uh, <laughs> we just, just met like his um, his brother. Oh my god! Like this, like the story. And I'm just like, oh my god! Oh, like because I, c you have to share it. And yeah. I was like, you can't miss out on this game. Like it's so good. <laughs> I was like, you're missing out on the story, so I'm gonna fill you in. Like it's an episode of like a, a TV show or something. Um, because it was just like. You will not believe. <laughs> it is really like that. And like, um, 
I, no, I was yeah. just going to say like the, the character, because you mentioned like the different characters that you meet along the way. And it's like an important thing about uh, like storytelling where you make your story and you, you add your characters. You really want to think about why is this character here? Not just because they're a cool character or they have a cool line or, or cool actions. Like what's the meaning to the story? And each time they introduce a new character, it's always has some impact on, you know, on, on Joel and Ellie or the, the sort of the direction of the story from that point on. And mm-hmm. it kind of builds up to uh, just th- those moments that stick in your mind. So we remember the experience of Henry and Sam. We remember, uh, is it uh, Bill, the kind of sort of the, the one that's laying all the traps and is a bit... Yeah. Um, but then he's got some, like, layers to him as well. We remember... Yeah. Um, Obviously, we've spoken about uh, Sarah and uh, Tommy, which is, uh, is that Joel's brother, who they yeah. meet again when they get to the compound. And that's like, that's a turning point for, um, for the relationship between Joel and Ellie, because you then have them, um, well, you have Joel thinking, you know, still in that mindset of, you know, okay, someone else take this responsibility. You know, I've, I've gone mm. as far as I can. And when Ellie finds out and runs away, that's a, like a real stretch in their relationship. But it's a real turning point because from that point on, when Joel does decide, OK, I'm going to take on this responsibility and we're going to go as far as it needs to go. Mm. Then we really start to see them become closer and closer. Yeah. Um, and I'm I think- kind of... Oh, no, God, because I'm kind of, like, leading towards yeah. the ending because I want to get to that ending. Yeah. Um, so just on that point, like, I think Tommy has a massive influence on that because, obviously, they have, like, a settlement um, out in the wilderness and there's families and he's got married and, um, obviously, Joel's kind of kind of distanced himself, distanced himself from his brother um, and I kind of get the feeling it's because it just brings up memories of his daughter and he just wants to, you know, wash himself of as many things that link it um and i can't remember what tommy says but i'm pretty sure there's something he says and i felt it uh and i I felt joel change (laughs) at that point um and it's one of those moments where they kind of someone shines a mirror or like puts a mirror in front of you and you really see like all the mistakes that you've made i can't remember the exact uh exchange yeah and like i don't know at that point like joel's the, the the gears and Joel kind of start to tick, his heart starts beating again, you know. Um and then you do you get to that point and they, they find Ellie and then they're going towards the settlement and he just kinda of goes, How far is this place? Uh yeah, no, come on, Ellie, get off your horse. Doesn't really explain to her as well. He's still in that stage of like not talking and not communicating his feelings. Um you know, I could really go into that yeah. a lot. I'm really into like uh, relationships and between people, but um, and yeah, she's kind of like, what, what? And he's like, yeah, we're going. And then like that was like the point. That was like his decision. Uh, yeah, and then we bring we're back to your your bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is where I confess. Uh, so uh, Tazzy, Vidas, Gina, uh, the only reason we are doing this podcast is because I need to talk about this ending. Okay, <laughs> I'm just going to be honest, right? That's the only reason we're here, because I need to talk about this ending. Uh, so we get to the point where uh, they meet, or well, they get to the, the Firefly Hospital, and it turns out that Ellie is, uh, you know, the potential hope for saving humanity from this uh, virus, from this thing that's turning people infected. But... Uh, it's in her is it in her brain and they they mm. need to operate and she might die and no Joel's, she will die it's not will. might she will oh, no, die she will. no she will <laughs> die but she might and she might save everyone but she might not but she will die yes yeah, that's right she'll definitely die, she'll die. okay <laughs> <laughs> and and joel just isn't having this so he is basically gonna take her away from that place but that means killing the uh the doctors killing a bunch of uh fireflies and as i'm sort of playing through the sequence where you're you've shot the doctor that's gonna operate on ellie you've carried her out you've got troops chasing you it sort of dawns on me like am i the bad guy 
in this, actually. It does make you question it. It mm. questions it. And then even more in the ending credits where, and I love the way they did this, like the kind of the courage in terms of like storytelling to not do like your typical Hollywood nicely wrapped up ending where sort of Ellie asks for the truth and, and, and Joel lies to her and she kind of accepts it and we end. And I'm like, whoa, I'm the bad guy. Like, I don't know what I had to feel about this. Yeah. So tell me how I feel about this. I don't feel that Joel's the bad guy or the good guy. I mean, we spoke about it before in this podcast that no one's like intrinsically good or bad. We all have both within us. And you're, you're always kind of just doing whatever you feel is right on that spectrum. Right. And, um, I, uh, but I don't think he's the good guy. But also, like, in this situation, I'm like, the Fireflies are not the good guys either. Like, because um, what's the name of the woman that's... Marlene. Marlene, yeah. yeah. Uh, she um, says it's what Ellie would have wanted, uh, meaning she did not confer with Ellie <laughs> beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> to, to clarify that, that, like, no one asked Ellie what mm. she wanted. Uh, everyone's just assuming they know what's best for her and assuming they know what she wants. Uh, and, you know, okay, Joel, he's not the good guy, but I think he's better than the Fireflies in this situation. Um, and then uh, watching the... Because I never played the DLC, watching the DLC it clarifies more to me that, um, yeah, I don't, I, I don't like Marlene. Uh, <laughs> There's something about her. Uh, and I really want hope in the second one, they, uh, clarify some points. Um, but I feel like he'd done what he felt was right. Um, do you, and uh, what he, know. he thought was, was right because, I don't think he did. It kind, what? it kind of go. I mean, part of it was selfish, but I feel like part of it is like she, because he says it's not your choice to make. And I think uh, to Marlene about uh, Ellie's life, and I think that's such a powerful line on when people, uh, when you're choosing a life over, even if it's over the many, it's. You know, it's, I feel like it's up to the, it's always up to the person, uh, and I feel like no, none of their choices are wrong uh, in that situation because it's yeah. you can't put a value on anyone's life as much as it seems like you can. And the obvious thing would be like you know, sacrifice her to save the many. It's, it's a chance uh, she could go on to do something even better to save everyone. Uh, they're I mean, Joel's lie is kind of like, did they even go through the possibility that there could be other kids like her? Because I don't think they did. And I feel like there's a very high chance there could be, like, one person on the entire planet has just randomly... (laughs) Like, (laughs) that don't sit with me. There's definitely more humans (laughs) that would develop that. (laughs) Might have helped me out here. So, so, so before we even get to that, um, I think what's really apparent is in the loss in the um, the DLC, um, the Left Behind. Yeah. Um, one of the things that has really pushed is that you're kind of fighting against the firefight um, and kind of showing them in a more more negative manner. I feel like I've listened to so much conversations about this and I've heard so much people talk about it and I've even heard Naughty Dog talk about it. And I, me personally, if I was Joel, I probably would have done the exact same thing. Mm. Um, what Joel did was completely selfish. And He's Joel com- was... Yeah, totally. It was completely selfish and Joel was didn't want to feel the same pain that he felt before. But... It doesn't mean I think he's the bad guy. So mm. I, I also I completely agree with, um, I I completely agree with Tassie where I feel like no one even consulted Ellie in that way, and I almost feel like 
I almost feel like if they did consult with Ellie, she would have said yes because the kind of person she is, she would have tried to want to save the world. Like she was so interested in what this world was in things like going to the record store and stuff like that. And she was so yeah. such a happy and hopeful person. Um, I feel like she probably would have sacrificed herself, but I don't feel like no, I don't think Joe would have even given, even if Ellie said yes, I don't think Joe would have let it happen. Cause by that no, point, not at all. In, he, yeah. he was in a selfish point where he's like, I'm not losing my child again. Yeah. Like he, with, without realizing he, he started to let her in. And then by the time he started to let her in, she was part of his heart and she wasn't going through that again. And I believe that it was a completely selfish thing. But also I, I, it's like when you watch movies and they're like, Oh, those people are expendable. Um, it doesn't matter. We can only we kill seventy people for yeah. the mass, the better good. I don't believe that stuff because I don't believe that any like Taz said, like everyone's life is at value. Um, but I do believe that they wrote the story for you to fall in love with a character and then feel like that character portray um, push, portrays your trust because. I think if they did it another way where you just went in there and you just fought the fire um, flies and you got her back, but because you had to kill the doctor, yeah. I think that... And you had that, to. When, like you had yeah, to. When, you, when you kill that doctor, that's the first time you feel guilty for shooting someone. That's yeah. the first time you feel yeah. like... You feel the weight of a life. Yeah. Yeah, you feel like a disgusting human being because in, in video games, like people always joke that, um, like Nathan Drake is a serial killer. Um, <laughs> you that, never feel this, like that though. You're like, yeah, no, they're just the bad guys and yeah. I'm yeah. killing them. <laughs> but there's a running joke in the gaming industry that he's a serial killer because he's just running around killing all <laughs> these people. Which and then true. he's like, no, you're the bad guy for stealing. <laughs> yeah. I heard that. That's fine. Well, you're the bad guy for stealing. But that was. That was the way. It was like, mm. no, we want you to feel yeah. like you did something wrong. And, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard playing mm. through that bit. Yeah, you know you did something wrong, but big man thing, I would have done the same thing. <laughs> yeah. I'm not even. I'm not even. I'm not even gonna act like I want. I would have done something different. And the reason why I also feel like Ellie would have gone through it is when Joe lo- lied to her, and she could. She, you could tell she knew. Yeah, he was she lying. accepted it. No, I don't even feel like she accepted it. I felt like something changed in their relationship. Mm, really? I feel like because she accepted two it, truths. So yeah. from yeah. every moment before, Ellie has been like the the hope. She's very hopeful. And I feel like that's part of her personality. So it won't ever completely change. I don't know. We'll see in Last of Us Part 2. But um, like she... She... <sighs> She kind of, I think at that point, like, Joel has fully become her dad. And you don't always agree with your parents, uh, but you always love them. So she, I feel like that moment solidified that relationship between them. But also was like, mm, I can make my own decisions. And I'm a bit upset that you, as my father figure, uh, didn't, you know, choose what I think's right. But also, you're my father figure. So that's that like your parents <laughs> your mm. parents um and i feel like it made their relationship more more of a parent uh, um parent child relationship right. uh, but with a strain on it does that make sense yeah i get that i just like i'm still kind of reconciling (laughs) my my feelings uh in that moment but because i i was i was kind of on the side of the greater good um and that's why i was feeling like uh, i'm the bad guy because i haven't even as joel i haven't even given this option the chance because it's like totally selfish but i I also feel i would have done the same thing Mm. in, in in that in that moment so yeah, maybe I'm the bad guy. Maybe that's what it's about. Also, like, it was like from getting her there to like, I don't know. It, I feel like there wasn't that much time between getting her there and deciding we're going to kill her. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> run some more tests <laughs> before yeah. you cut this. Yeah. <laughs> Switch this girl. Like, They're ready. They're that's ready. why I don't feel like the fireflies are necessarily a good. I feel like, because in this kind of, it's like, uh, 
you have two big organizations the military and the fireflies and the fireflies are trying to overflow overthrow the military uh and uh grow humanity back to like a peak um whereas the military are like we just need to survive this is the new normal uh let's not let's not uh attempt to get back to a a, a more peak society of humans yeah. um but I feel like both those groups are very, very uh, military type groups and they're just two sides of the same coin. Uh, and then you've got like the rest of the world, uh, like yeah, Tommy's, um, their settlement uh, are actually quite flourishing. And then you've got the cannibals. <laughs> Okay, and bear with. I yeah. mean, I, I, I <laughs> love it. that's another like a whole wow. This story is just. I, I love that arc of it as well. That, um, that was one and, of my favorite points. Yeah, um, and yeah, like they're just they're just another like regime that want to control everything and don't consider like they consider the 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 masses, but I feel like for their own power and gain. That's what it feels like to me anyway. Whereas mm. Joel's like having an emotional human connection. Do you know what I find's mad? So we've been talking for close to an hour and we haven't even really delved into the infected. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Actually, we just we skipped over the infected. Like but I mean like, while talking about them, like what did you think about the design of them and how they worked in the game because it wasn't like um like an out and out zombie game like Tazzy said it, it's not like every sequence in the game was about mowing down zombies or escaping zombies they were used quite sparingly and and i felt used quite well and designed quite well to fit within mm. the game well i think i think it's like it's amazing because like the whole story is because of the infected like Joel would never have had to run if, out of his house. That um, officer wouldn't be wouldn't have killed his daughter because like mm. none of this would have occurred if it wasn't about the infected and 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 that that feeling on edge that that so even though you don't interact with them that much, they have such an impact and like mm. the sound, the clicker sound. Like, oh yeah. <laughs> If that I ever sound. hear that sound, <laughs> when you oh are, my when god, I'm getting a weapon ready. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready to with, fight for my life. Yeah, when you're playing with headphones and that sound, it just really, it really um, gets to you. And what I really liked is, like you said, Nigel, the, the design of them. It wasn't zombies. Like they, it was, it was, it was an infection, and it was, it was a fungi <laughs> infection that was growing out of people and and. And when we talk about nine times out of ten, when we talk about zombie games and 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 stuff like that, we our focus is just that that scary zombie element of zombies. Like for example, um, when we talk about Resident Evil, the presence is all about the scare. Mm. And the, for me, like I don't find this game scary, but I do feel like there were scary interactions. So there was moments like when you were going through that parking lot. Um, and it's just like the infections are just everywhere, and you're just like, there's like so many. Like, how many bloaters is there in that section, oh, and yeah. how many clickers? And because you, you can go either through, straight through the middle, or there's like doors on the sides, and you can you can either sneak or combat, but with limited supply. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think I tried like every way and I just kept getting so scared. <laughs> just freeze and die. It's so mad. And um, yeah, just a lot of it was sound as well. Just yeah. not, not just them not being just scared. Sound. But... Sorry. Like, I'm just thinking about like how, so even though like the actual infected weren't present for that much of the game, the infected had lots of presence throughout this game um so because it was a uh, f uh a fungi infection type thing uh you have the spores you have like the the nature and they kind of like grows out of them if that when they die it kind of like everything grows around and you can see it and so there's as you're walking through like any uh area 
even those that are mainly uh, human occupied at the point, you see evidence of it constantly. Uh, so even if you're not hyper aware of it, it's just constantly around. And as you do get into like an infected area, you can tell the the atmosphere starts to change, uh, especially when you're coming across clickers and bloaters, because obviously uh, they have stages. Uh, so if you if you don't know about the game, uh, they have stages of infection uh, and at the point of clickers is like the second to last stage and their whole face is just like a plant thing uh and then you get into a bloater i'm sure you've seen bloaters in other video games don't need to explain those um but that's the final stage so if there's going to be a clicker there's spores everywhere the air gets thicker there's more like growth along the walls there's more like blood everywhere and (laughs) Sometimes the clicker doesn't come when you expect and you think you're safe. (laughs) And then it comes. Comes, yeah. (laughs) And then it comes. Um, But it's constantly around you. You, you, it, the, the level designs are so well made because of, because of that. Yeah. Yeah. They're really well integrated into the game. Um, I guess I wanted to uh, get a, a couple things for from everyone while uh, as we wrap up and just thinking like from where the story is at the moment um your reaction on what has been seen in part two obviously the official stuff from sony and everything uh the trailers uh and where you see the game going uh, and also your favorite moment from the last of us part one uh midas you want to start all right, so let's give a shout out to the giraffe. <laughs> Aww. Yeah. That was that was that was a, that so was a big moment and it was it was it was such a human moment because it was the first time that it wasn't about pain, it wasn't about suffering. It was actually like I never thought seeing a giraffe would make me have <laughs> feelings. <laughs> I was like, raw. Like life goes on, you oh, know. Yeah, I know you <laughs> Like that, really felt that like there's that hope. you proper was like there's hope at the end of the tunnel, <laughs> like it's mad. Um, favorite moment for me was hmm, I don't know what is my favorite moment. It's a I tough think one. yeah, I I think it's just probably the over. I think I know this is probably a cop out, but for me being able to a game like the last of us being able to be something like i'm a very like the reason why i game i'm not like a big multiplayer gamer like i'm not really one to play online i like narratives and i like to be lost in the world and to have sony believe in a studio like naughty dog and let them give them money to to make a game like this like that is a win for me um, in terms of um, part two, firstly, I have to say that right now spoilers are going out crazy. So I'm just trying to do everything to stop myself from spoilers. For example, even when I was looking up like show notes or looking up The Last of Us, like to look at dates and stuff like that, I'm looking at it up all on private viewers because I don't <laughs> want Google to pick it up on my algorithm and start showing me I'll stuff that I don't want to see. Like, <laughs> yeah, like so in, showing me stuff that I don't want to see. Like if I see anything Last of Us on YouTube, I just put it as hide. Like I'm really not just trying to see anything. But the, the two trailers that I did see, um, for me... There's two really apparent things. One is one thing that we we haven't even mentioned that Last of Us is incredible with is with representation. Like they're really good with representation, um, like with multicultural people. But even Ellie being gay, and mm. that's not really explored until um, the Left Behind when mm. you meet um, her best friend Riley, um, Riley o, who basically. Morally, and basically, you find out that they they they're fancying each other, and they've got this this thing going on between them. But they're both young, and they don't know how to really approach it. And then they kiss. Um, mm-hmm. So that opening scene where she's obviously kissing her girlfriend, and they're showing that kind of versatility, and that is really really important. But from everything I've seen so far, and I almost feel like Ellie's almost showing that 
I'm, I don't care about being the bad guy. Like, I will be the bad guy in this story. Like, it's so, it looks so dark. And The Last of Us is quite dark, but this one looks really gr- dark and gritty. Like, even the trailer they show was someone being hung on some stuff. Like, I think they're really showing, like, this is a game for adults, and we're not scared to kind of twirl mm. down that. And I'm really, really excited to see the story they're going to tell us and that's the thing with the last of us it's not about most games is all about oh we want you to have your own story and there's loads of different threads for you to have your own story naughty dog are like nope we're telling you our story and you're going to experience it and you're going to feel yep. what we want you to feel and i'm yeah. really excited to feel what such an amazing team want me to feel mm. yeah. yeah okay tazzy Oh my god, favorite moment. <sighs> okay. Um can I have two? Yes, I will allow that. Okay. Um so um the the scene with the when we meet the brothers, uh, it's actually when they've been together for a while, which is before they leave us actually. Mm. Uh and um Ellie and so, I think sorry, the brothers Henry and Sam. Yeah. Is yeah, Sam okay. the younger one? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, uh, so Ellie and Sam are having like they're just oh, being yeah. kids. Uh and um Joel and that they're just like, Oh wow, they're just <laughs> they're re- like it's just a really uh human moment and I think it's sort of similar to like the, the giraffe scene where it's like life kind of just goes on you don't stop having these human moments Mm. uh and even in times of survival like we're still human we still kind of have stuff like joy and share interests and things like that um and yeah it's just i don't know it's really emotional um (laughs) and then my other favorite scene is uh when ellie has been uh kept captive by the cannibals oh, yeah yeah and kind of does she's like way too feisty and he's like i'm gonna have to kill her uh and just oh she's so badass in that moment and she's just like look i'm infected see it and he looks and they're kind of like shocked so she uses that moment just to you know escape and stab one of them and run and <laughs> yeah it was pretty cool just to see her just so um so resilient and so like she just she just keeps on fighting for whatever she believes in. She keeps fighting. Um, and then is that the only boss scene in the fight, the game? Pretty much. It's the only part that really feels like a boss scene, right? Yeah. yeah. Sort of I feel like traditional... there's one more bloater moment that feels like a really, but this is more traditional in, in a sense that, you know, you get your boss, your, your yeah. three stage boss, where it's like increasing difficulty to yeah, yeah. eventually take that felt like, yeah, so more video gamey. Yeah. yeah that, that, that felt like the most video game moment in the game for me. Yeah. Mm. Fine. I yeah. really felt like I was playing a game again. Yeah. Cause it's like, you, it's, it is at different stages as well, isn't it? Cause you, there's one point where you've got to be more sneaky. Uh, and then you get your chance to attack. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. And then uh, in terms of like, uh, what I'm looking forward to in this, I'm just completely blind. I've watched, I've not even watched a, like a trailer. I've watched the teaser where she's playing the guitar and then that's it. And okay. I was just like, <laughs> cool. I want to play that game and I don't yeah. need to see absolutely anything else, uh, until I play it because. Cool. I just want to, I don't want to, I know what I want in terms of, I'd want uh, more of, I just want to know what happens. Like what's happened to the fireflies? Is there another cure or is it just like survival? Uh, Is it obviously there's a a point on the relationship and it's like, it's, what is it? I don't know. There's so many options for it to explore in terms of themes and story. Like, where are we going to go with this? And I'm just excited. Like, I don't, I don't want to see anything because I just want to experience it the way I did the first one, which is had no idea uh, and just started playing it and was like, wow. <laughs> mm. That's cool. Okay. Um, 
yeah, I realize the difficulty in like trying to pick a favorite moment because as you guys are talking, I'm like, oh, actually, I don't uh, find it tough to pick one moment. Uh, but it was a uh, a moment I will. I just want to highlight just because I feel like it. You know, I've spoken about the the kind of cross section between the, the narrative and gameplay, and I feel there's one moment that really did this uh, so well, and it was after that winter section where uh, Ellie is quite depressed. And um, up until that point, the game has trained you in so many ways. And one of them was the the boost that Joel gives Ellie to get to, you know, uh, hard to reach places. So you just train, you, you go to the, the, the gap, the, the ledge, you hit a triangle uh, and it's a boost. So there's a point where they're in some kind of station or building or something and ellie's kind of like sat so you go to the uh the ledge you press triangle so joel does the animation to get the to give her the boost and nothing happens and ellie's still sat down and he has to you have to do it again to kind of you know get her to eventually go and do it but it's such a small moment but it's so big in terms of kind of communicating the fact that you know ellie is not the normal Ellie that we've seen and they managed mm. to do that through the mechanic and they kind of reinforce that in, in the narrative and the discussion between the two. So I think for me, that's kind of like one of my favorite moments in terms of like remembering uh, the game because it, it just, it's such a small thing to make a big impact that reinforces mm. like all the moments that you've had uh, throughout that game. Uh, yeah. And then, I've... oh, so go ahead. I was just going to say, I think that's why it's so important not to have spoilers for this game because it's not... Like, the story is so entwined in the mechanics and the atmosphere that it sets mm. by watching uh, the leaks, like, you're ruining the experience for yourself. Yeah. Um, because you're not getting... You're getting a fraction. It's like not having all your senses. No, I know. That's, like, the whole... It's like eating food without having taste. Yeah. Like... <laughs> And then making it's, the judgment on it as well. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's what, just weird. <laughs> What's really sad is there's a lot of people who are just intentionally spoiling, putting spoilers out. So, like, I know. people say, like, if you don't even... If you watch a Last of Us video, like, don't even read comments. comments yeah. Like, like mm-hmm. anyone who's working within, like, the industry who's doing anything Last of Us related, people are just putting spoilers underneath it. Like, it's really sad. And it's sad because... Um, I, I kind of was delving deep to find out what happened um, mm-hmm. because Naughty Dog have obviously last year they got a lot of bad press in terms of when it comes to crunch and them having a lot of a lot of their stuff saying like they they've been under crunch and 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 being like overworked on games and they've done so much better on this year and initially people were saying that it was a leak that came from the studio but apparently yeah. it was actually a hacker Hack, wasn't it yeah yeah so someone who hacks is just, just someone who basically hacked through and is now just spoiling it for so many people and people like us who who this game means so much like someone's tweet or someone's comment on a YouTube video could actually or affect ruin experience. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, change your whole experience. Because could you imagine playing The Last of Us if you knew um, what happened at the end? Yeah, yeah, it would it would be a different experience. Um, yeah, it'd be a whole like we wouldn't even be talking about it the way we are. I feel like I feel like it would still be a very good moving game because it is all the little moments and mechanics that do make it. But I feel like you wouldn't you'd lose something. take the moment you wouldn't take the moments to appreciate those uh, mm. as much because you'd be so distracted by the yeah. ending. I think I'm lucky that I have the p- power of obliviousness. Yeah, that's, a good, that's a good power. gaming and and shows and stuff i mean um, I, I don't understand like i'm, I'm not even gonna because I, I i thought i was gonna mention it and go into it but it just a lot of that just annoys me for different reasons just yeah you know if you're interested in the game yeah just don't don't spoil it for yourself do your best not yeah, to spoil avoid it, because it just, all, all costs. Yeah, just play the game and then make a judgment or don't and mm. play something else it's uh but um <laughs> So, I, mean, I don't even care if people spoil it for themselves. Just don't spoil it for others. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want, if you want, if you want to see it all, you go and spoil it, and you has it as a personal thing. Don't spoil it for everyone just so you can get likes. Yeah, or yeah. so you can get dislikes. So you can feel some 
I don't know, whatever you feel Some when Some kind you... of power trigger. Yeah. There's no, way I, better I ways you can get it. Mate, do you know what's way more effective than spoiling it for someone? Having the power to spoil it from someone, telling them you have that spot power and not doing it. I know. Yeah, do that instead. <laughs> Great <laughs> power. <laughs> responsibility. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, in terms of like looking forward to the next game, I think uh, for me, what I would just want to see is, I, I guess the the decisions that Ellie has to make because even though Ellie in The Last of Us is kind of like the sort of breakout star if, if you want to use that term um, this is Joel's story like really but in uh, part two I feel this is now Ellie's story so now she's going to you know she's grown up and she's going to have to make maybe some of the same decisions that Joel would have made um, sort of in the early days of this uh, this uh, fungal virus thingy so yeah i'm really interested to see the the decisions that uh ellie has to make in this world and the consequences uh, of those from a narrative uh, perspective um mm. so yeah uh i mean yeah, we could talk about last of us for ages but uh yeah let us know your thoughts and your feedback on this discussion the game in general uh tell us if you feel like the bad guy uh, taking Ellie away from the fireflies. I'm still not sure where I am uh, on that. I might need to meditate on that some more. Uh, but <laughs> we're going to go into a storytelling tip uh, for The Last of Us. Mm-hmm.